from D. James Kennedy Ministries. This is Kennedy Classics. Welcome to Kennedy Classics. Hello, I'm Frank Wright, president of D. James Kennedy Ministries, where we are standing for truth and defending your freedom. Welcome to Kennedy Classics. These are confusing and dangerous days with a destructive ideology being forced on your children and grandchildren in school and through the media. This ideology tells them that there is no such thing as male and female that those are only chosen roles that can be adopted or cast off at will. Meanwhile, those who changed those chosen roles, called transgendered people, attempt suicide at nearly 10 times the rate of the rest of the population. This ideology is not only false, but dangerous as well. We have put together an open letter to President Trump and your state's governor calling upon them to stop the gender tragedy. You can get your copy of that open letter to sign it and make your voice heard by writing to us at D. James Kennedy Ministries, Box 11164, Fort Lauderdale, Florida, 33339. Or you can call toll-free 888 888- 332-3069. And of course, you can go online to djkm.org. As we look around us, we see a world that appears out of control, from school shootings to the insanity of pretending that men are women and women are men. We are becoming a society untethered from objective reality. But what if there were one common thread that makes sense of it all? As Dr. D. James Kennedy is about to explain, there is. He shares more and gets down to the source of all this madness in his vital message, The Root of the Problem. Our scripture lesson this morning is taken from Paul's first letter to the Corinthians. 1 Corinthians chapter 1 We will begin with the 18th verse. May we hear the inspired word of the living God. For the preaching of the cross is to them that perish foolishness, but unto us which are saved it is the power of God. For it is written, I will destroy the wisdom of the wise and bring to nothing the understanding of the prudent. Where is the wise? Where is the scribe? Where is the disputer of this world? Hath not God made foolish the wisdom of this world? And after that, in the wisdom of God, the world by wisdom knew not God. It pleased God by the foolishness of preaching to save them that believe. For the Jews require a sign, and the Greeks seek after wisdom. But we preach Christ crucified. Unto the Jews, a stumbling block, and unto the Greeks, foolishness. But unto them which are called, both Jews and Greeks, Christ, the power of God and the wisdom of God, because the foolishness of God is wiser than men, and the weakness of God is stronger than men. And may God speak to us today through his holy word, and may his name ever be praised. Amen. My sermon topic this morning is the root of the problem. And my wife asked me yesterday, well, what is that? And I said, what do you think it is? She said, why, sin, of course. My wife is a very perceptive lady. And I said, honey, that's right. And if you go to the etiology of the whole problem, eventually you get back to sin. But I was thinking of something more recent 
a more modern human construct, which is indeed the root of most all of the problems that we face today or have for the last several centuries. Now, I wonder what that would be. It would be interesting to have all of you write it down. I'm sure some of you would get it right. I fear some others of you would not. I also believe this, that when I tell you what I think it is, many of you will not believe me. But I also trust that before this service is over, you will see why I say what I'm going to say. The root of the problem of most of the great ills that have afflicted society and do afflict it today are caused by the teaching of evolution. It has been called the big lie, which has deceived hundreds of millions of people and has probably brought about more death than any other view in the history of the world. Evolution, which simply says that the whole universe is made up of nothing but matter. And matter, time, and chance, the trinity of materialism, have brought all things into existence that, they do, that do exist, and therefore there is no God. One scientist said that he was confident that if they were willing to be honest about the matter, if you interviewed social scientists at our elite universities across the country, you would find out something surprising. You would find that at least 95, perhaps he says 99% of them, would not be willing to sign the Declaration of Independence, if they were honest. Why? Very simple. They don't believe in a creator. They don't believe that we have been created equal or any other way. We, they do not believe that we have been endowed with certain inalienable rights by this creator. None of that they believe. And if they were honest, they would not sign the document that makes us and made us Americans. And he says, parents may do all that they can to rear their children to be honest and godly and moral young people, to have purpose in their lives, and then they send them off to four years of college, and after that, they wonder what happened. And all of those things are undermined, and if that doesn't do it, a couple of years of graduate school are almost certain to destroy any vestige of belief in God, moral absolutes, morality, Americanism, patriotism, or any of those things. And that, my friends, is due to evolution. Evolution has made our public schools and universities and this college a mortal danger to the lives and souls of young people with tragic consequences. Dr. Ernest Gordon, the Dean Emeritus of Princeton University Chapel, also the hero and author of The Bridge Over the River Kwai, a fascinating and godly man. He said that during the late 50s, he was invited to the, address the senior class of an English department in a city high school. When I arrived at the school, I introduced myself to the assistant headmaster whose office was at the entrance. He guided me to the appropriate hall. Twenty years later, I was invited to the same school for the same purpose. I again presented myself at the same office. But it was no longer the office of an educator. It was, or even the assistant headmaster, it was the command post of a police inspector. Corridors and classrooms were monitored by police officers who reported regularly to the inspector. The reasons for the change were obvious. Violence, assault, rape, drug-induced madness. 
I interpret this scene as evidence of the end times of a civilization that once benefited from the Christian worldview, that once exalted creation and people and provided the ideals essential for an authentic education. I recognize that civilization does not create Christians. However, the community of faith created and still creates the civility that makes civilization possible. The demoralized school is the tragic consequence of society's rejection of a biblical worldview that provided the intellectual dynamic of Western education. And at the heart of all of that is the doctrine of evolution, which first of all got rid of God. As Dostoevsky put it, if there is no God, then everything is permissible. Think about it. That's true. Because of evolution, man has lost his significance. In Western civilization, it has always been held that man is a creature with a great purpose, created in the image of God to fulfill his purposes in this world, and that he has an everlasting life ahead of him. But today, students are taught that man has no purpose because, you see, teleology, the science of purposes, is the bete noire, the black beast of evolution. They cannot stand that anything would have purpose. Teleology must go. And so, therefore, everything is not pre-planned by a divine intelligence and a beneficent God who providentially provides for his creatures. No, it all happens purely by chance with no foreview of what the end in mind is at all. Therefore, man has no purpose. Consequently, he has no significance. Stephen Jay Gould, who was three years ago the most influential evolutionist in America, professor at Harvard University, and then he had a great awakening. He died. And he met the Creator face to face. That must have been a horribly shocking event, to say the least. But in one article he wrote, he said, man or even woman has the crowning achievement of some grand cosmic plan. What mortal conceit? And I would imagine that virtually everyone here believes it. But to Gould, it is a mortal conceit. We are but an afterthought, he says. We are a little accidental twig, the kind that you would pick up off the lawn of your backyard and you would throw it into the garbage can. And so man lost all of his divinely bestowed significance and importance in the onslaught of evolution. And others will say, well, all scientists believe in evolution, and therefore we must believe it. In fact, I would say the most persuasive argument in our colleges and high schools why students ought to believe in evolution is that all scientists believe it. You've probably heard that statement made. Well, let's take a little deeper look. First of all, who invented science? It was Francis Bacon, who is credited with having been the inventor of the scientific method, that combination of induction and deduction of hypotheses and proof, empirical proof. Francis Bacon. Francis Bacon was a devout Christian. He was a Christian. He believed in God, he believed in Christ, he believed in the Bible, and he believed in creation. And said that God had given us two books. He has given us the book of nature to understand the world and the book of scriptures, and we are to read both of them. Said the founder of science, wasn't a Christian? Hardly. Who was the greatest scientist 
that ever lived. A poll taken just a few years ago of scientists concluded that the greatest scientist that ever lived was Sir Isaac Newton. And if you ever read a list of the things that he discovered, it is awesome. And the mathematical laws of gravity are just one piece of that huge puzzle from this gigantic intellect. That was also, by the way, among other things, a co-discoverer of calculus. Sir Isaac Newton. Sir Isaac Newton believed in God, he believed in Christ, he believed in the Bible, and he believed in creation. And to the utter chagrin of modern evolutionary scientists, he wrote more books on theology than he did on science, and still became the greatest scientist that ever lived, according to them. Evolution has failed at every point. All of the major pillars of evolution have collapsed in the last 20 years. And for example, the idea that the amazing and almost unbelievable complexity of a cell could have arisen by chance, said Sir Fred Hoyle of Cambridge and Oxford, one of the greatest living astronomers, developer of the uh, static uh, theory of <clears throat> Creation said the idea that a cell could have risen by chance is evidently nonsense of the highest order, which is precisely what your children are being taught in every public school in America. Nonsense of the highest order. It's not even a theory, much less a fact. Of course, you know that Hitler was a devout evolutionist and a follower of Nietzsche and Haeckel, and that he taught evolution to his, to his troops. He gave them all, all of the Wehrmacht, a copy of uh, Darwin's book and Nietzsche's book, on, which talked about evolution of the God-man, of our becoming God, and he was absolutely determined to create a super race by getting rid of the inferior races. And by the way, racism is basically an evolutionary concept. The word race is never even used in the Bible, except for a foot race. But all of the 19th century evolutionists were strong racists, including Darwin, who said that the inferior races at some time in the future would all be destroyed by the superior races. and. Hitler and others set out to do so. We also know that the founder of Planned Parenthood set out to get rid of the human weeds, as she called them, so that the superior stock might prevail. And also, I trust you know that Karl Marx, the founder of communism, felt that evolution was exactly what he needed as a pseudo-scientific foundation for communism. He even wanted to dedicate Das Kapital to Charles Darwin. His wife had a fit, and he said he wouldn't do it because he didn't want to cause unhappiness in his family. Uh, and he also hoped that his wife would let go of his nose. <laughs> unhappiness in his family. She was much more conservative than her husband, to say the least. Communism is based upon evolution, as is Nazism, as is fascism. And the communists killed, according to the Senate Committee of the United States of America, 135 million people in peacetime. The greatest mass murderers of all time. Stalin and Mao and Pol Pot and all of the rest, and all of that complements of evolution. We can conclude with a statement made by a very famous evolutionist, Sir Arthur Keith. Arthur Keith was the number one evolutionist in Great Britain, and after or at the end of the Second World War, he said that what we have just seen is for the first time in history a modern 
secular technological state has based itself entirely upon the principles of evolution. He was horrified. He wrote 20 books defending evolution. And then he saw it in Nazi Germany and the Holocaust. And he was appalled. And he said also this, let me say in conclusion, I have come to this. Keep in mind who this is talking. The law of Christ is incompatible with the law of evolution. As far as the law of evolution has worked hitherto, nay, the two laws are at war with each other. The law of Christ can never prevail until the law of evolution is destroyed. The greatest evolutionist of Great Britain, Sir Arthur Keith. May we pray. Lord, we pray that you'll topple this whole monstrous edifice which has brought more death, more evil, more vice, more vileness into the world than any other human theory ever promulgated. And we pray that the law of Christ will prevail. And this one who came and commanded us to care for the weak, not destroy them, to help those that are sick and the poor and not let them die, that his views will prevail, though they are the very antithesis of evolution, and that his love and mercy and grace will cover the world, and that thou, O Christ, once more will be glorified, and that the wondrous effects of your ethical, moral, spiritual teaching will once more prevail in our nation and in the world. In Christ's name, amen. When we reject the truth that we are made in God's image and for his purposes, we do so at our own peril. Yet what is so amazing is that God loves us so much that he graciously sent his own son, Jesus Christ, to die in our place, to endure what we should endure, to pay the penalty we deserve to pay. And he did all of this out of love and so that we might receive the free gift of eternal life. Friend, if you have not done so yet, I urge you to invite Jesus Christ into your heart to be your Savior and Lord. This means that you admit you're a sinner, we all are, and that you repent of your sins and place your trust in Christ alone. If you're ready to do that, we can go to God in prayer right now. Just pray this simple prayer with me. Lord Jesus Christ, I admit that I'm a sinner and I am sorry for my sins and ask you to forgive me. I place my trust in you alone and thank you for the marvelous gift of eternal life. Please help me to live for you from this day forward. In your name I pray, amen. If you just prayed that prayer sincerely from your heart, you've begun a great adventure with Christ and we wanna help you grow in your faith by sending you Beginning Again. This is the book Dr. Kennedy wrote for new believers. It contains the book of John from the New Testament and that I recommend you read a chapter a day. You also find answers to some of the questions you may have about the Christian faith. To receive your copy of Beginning Again, just write to our address or call our toll-free number. And may God richly bless you. As Dr. Kennedy so aptly reminded us, evolution has failed at every point, and the teaching of evolution is failing our children and our nation with deadly results. Clearly, the nihilistic teaching of this theory is incompatible with the glorious gospel of Jesus Christ and His law. Our great country has fallen down a slippery slope. Just look at the movement in America that denies the biological reality of gender and argues that gender is merely a function of choice or even of personal preference. 
the news media, even the so-called conservative outlets have largely adopted the politically correct view on gender issues. But that view is not biblical and it's not true. And it is putting people in danger as women's restrooms are opened up to biological men claiming to be women and some children are mutilated in so-called gender reassignment surgery. We have put together an open letter to President Trump and to the governors of each state calling upon them to stop the gender tragedy. Did you know that a staggering 41% of transgendered people attempt to kill themselves at some point? That is a rate 10 times higher than the general population. This radical ideology, which is now being taught in many of our schools and public institutions, presents a direct threat to your own children and grandchildren. So make your voice heard by contacting us immediately to get and sign your open letter. Simply write to us at D. James Kennedy Ministries, Box 11164, Fort Lauderdale, Florida, 33339, or call toll-free 888-332-3069, or go online to djkm.org. And if you are able to give a generous donation to the ongoing work of this ministry, I will thank you by sending you a booklet I've written called The Great Confusion which explains this dangerous agenda and what you can do about it. And if you are able to give a donation of $50 or more, we will send you the booklet along with the DVD program, The Age of Gender Confusion, featuring compelling stories, including one man who was personally victimized by this false ideology, but found healing in Jesus Christ. We will send you the booklet, The Great Confusion, as thanks for your generous donation. And we will include the Age of Gender Confusion DVD as thanks for a donation of $50 or more. And make sure to contact us to sign your open letter to President Trump and your governor, calling upon them to stop the gender tragedy. Simply write to us at D. James Kennedy Ministries, Box 11164, Fort Lauderdale, Florida, 33339. Call toll free 888-332-3069. Or go online to djkm.org. I'm Frank Wright. Thanks for joining us for this edition of Kennedy Classics. We'll see you next time. Today's program is available on DVD for your gift to this ministry of any amount. Please call, write, or log on to our website today. This has been a production of D. James Kennedy Ministries.